Como ok, uh, we as, uh, as UPNDA in Lusaka district, we have decided that we can vigorously respond to a very hot topic that is happening, that is trending in our country as regards to the increase of fuel prices. My name is Amatomola Likwanya. I'm UPND Lusaka District Information and Publicity Secretary, together with my colleagues, Mr. Alex Wadia, and my colleagues from the party. As UPND, we wish to update the nation and to inform members of the general public that uh, the increase in fuel prices that we have seen, it is a well-known fact that it is as a result of the war that is happening in Russia and in Ukraine. Zambia is a developing country. We are in the third, 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 world. third world. As a country, we don't import or export many things. We are dependent on developed countries like Russia, Ukraine, and developed countries. We don't produce fuel ourselves. We are, cons we are a consuming economy. Most of the fuel that we we, we, that gets into our country comes through ship, comes through pipelines and as we are speaking now the developed countries that are the major suppliers of, of oil, of fuel they are at war international financial lending institutions, they are focusing on the war in, in, in Russia and in Ukraine as we are speaking right now, ships companies that are transportation companies Okay, they are also affected by this, this, this war. We are also Zambian <coughs> citizens. We are also Zambian citizens who are affected by this international crisis. And I want to update the Zambian people that as we are speaking right now, the price of fuel in the United States of America has gone far much higher than the price of fuel here in our country, in Zambia. The price of fuel in South Africa, the price of fuel in Zimbabwe, and in other neighboring countries has also gone high. It is not because the UPND government is not taking care or trying as far as they can to reduce the price of fuel. It is because of the international crisis that we have. Therefore, we wish to appeal to our friends in the opposition that let them begin to do level-headed politics and understand the situation that we are in. This is not the first time in the history of our country that fuel is increasing. We are, we are talking about how our friends in the previous government increased fuel. I also wish to respond to assertions and the submissions by our friends in the opposition that are suggesting that we bring back fuel subsidies. It is virtually impossible for us to bring back fuel subsidies because the money that was channeled and wasted to fuel subsidies is the money that is being pumped in the education sector. Today we have free education from grade 1 to grade 12 because of the money that some of the money that came from the fuel subsidies, it is going to free education. The money that is channeled to CDF, part of that money came through, through the, the, the money that was extracted from, 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 from fuel subsidies. Above all, what we are saying and appealing to the Zambian people is let us give this government chance. We are only seven months old in government. And there are a number of turbulences that we have been, we have been faced with. And these are partly caused by the international crisis, war that is happening. Lastly, as I give my friend a chance to speak, I want to say that um, Honorable uh, Hari Kalaba of the DP, uh, DP uh, uh, Democratic Party yesterday was uh, telling the nation that uh, uh, why have we given uh, uh, investors a five years tax holiday? Uh, that is also a subsidy. We could have subs subsidized on fuel. The point we are saying is that we cannot suffer mm -hmm. twice. We cannot have two things. Where well, our youths who are working in industries, they lose their jobs, and at the end of the day, there is also high increase of fuel. The reason why Tax holidays are given to investors. It is to boost investor confidence. Number two, so that we can have more job creation by having many, many companies coming to invest in our country. As I'm speaking to you right now, there's the Lusaka 
multi facility zone where a lot of companies have been have been uh, created and a lot of our youths are getting employed there are a lot of uh, manufacturing places where companies are going to to come on board and our youths are going to be employed so i want to summarize by saying we understand the situation that we have we are appealing to you as the people of this country let us understand the vision of the president let us understand that this crisis that we have has not been caused by the UPND government. This crisis has been caused by the war that is happening in Ukraine. And a number of countries are affected by it. And we want to assure you, the Zambian people, that President Agande Chirema and the UPND government are committed to finding a long-lasting solution to this fuel crisis. He is having talks with the international organizations, uh, different countries, different companies, so that we can ratify this situation. This is not the time to politic. If the war in Ukraine and in Russia is going to continue, Zambia and other developing countries are going to suffer more than they are suffering right now. It is our prayer that the crisis that is happening there should end. And that is the reason why Zambia in the United Nations uh, meetings voted against the war in, in Russia. The same people, the opposition and political party leaders, they condemned us as a country for voting against the war. They said Zambia should not have taken sides. But we are saying we are against this war because it's going to affect us economically as a country. Just to add on, on what my colleague just to add on, on what my colleague has already elaborated, I think pretty much uh, everything boils down to uh, the conflict that is and that is undergoing in Ukraine and Russia. This conflict is not something that we should take lightly. This is why we've been against that conflict because eventually, economically, will be affected. This is not a problem where we say our economic policies are very difficult. Our economic policies are not all laid out. We have very good economic policies that have been laid out now because we happen to be found in such a conflict. So let's not cap let's not capitalize on this economic on the on, on the conflict and make it as though these are failed policies we have clear economic policies that the president has laid out for this country so let's just be patient that this whole thing is going to come to an end so that the country can move forward it has got nothing to do with economic policies that have been laid out the war in ukraine will affect every nation you can check with the imf the U.S. is affected. You can check from Canada. Canadians are affected everywhere globally. Everyone has been affected by this war. It's nothing to do with the policies of His Excellency President Aka Indechile. Please, let's not politicize this at all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Maybe just ask you a question before uh, we end the live video. Yeah. Uh, you've spoken about this issue being uh, one that is not only affecting Zambia but a number of countries. Why then, as a party, did you dispute this when the previous government also mentioned that the prices they had were, you know, it was a global crisis? You disputed, but why do you want the Zambians to believe you now? Well, the answer is very simple. It is because mm -hmm. statistics at that particular time were not indicating that the time that the, the patriotic front government were increasing the price of fuel, it was the same with other countries. At the time that the, the, the fuel price in the country had, inc had increased, Botswana were procuring cheap fuel. At the time that we were buying fuel at a very high price in our country, Zimbabwe was procuring fuel at a cheaper price. But right now, global statistics can tell you that in Zimbabwe, fuel is high. In, 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 in Malawi, fuel is high. In US, Botswana, US. in the U.S., Canada fuel well. is, is, is high. Yes. This is a global crisis, it's and global that is crisis. the reason why we are talking about the fact that all of us as, as, as Zambian people must be able to join our hands, join our hearts and hands together to see how best we can support this government, support the president. He means well. He also has a family. He also has brothers and sisters who are going to be affected by this fear. We are human beings. We are not robots as a government. We are also affected by this, this crisis. However, government, and I can assure you, government and the president are making sure that they are going to find a long-lasting solution to this crisis that we have. 
Because we cannot continue saying that fuel is high and not do something. There is something that government is planning to do on the issue of the increase of, of fuel. However, our worry is that if the, the war in Russia continues, we are going to be affected as Africa, as a continent. Developing countries are going to be affected. And that is the reason why we are saying we are in a crisis as a country, as a continent. We are appealing to the Zambian people to be very strong, to be steadfast as they wait for government's remedial interventions. One of the interventions that government is trying to, inter to, 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 to introduce is they are trying to talk with international financial lending institutions like the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, to see how best they can cushion on this crisis that we have. That is the reason why Zambia is not an island. We are going to engage other international organizations and institutions and other governments so that we see how we can work together. I want to also update the Zambian people that as a country, we have been funded in terms of the healthy sector and other sectors by the United States government. Now, if the United States government that funds our country is at war, their interest is to see how best they can help Ukraine to resolve the conflict. How then are they going to concentrate on helping our country? If other entities that fund us are trying to see how best they can resolve this conflict, how best are they, are they going to help our country? We are in a crisis, but we are appealing to the Zambian people, can you did, uh, stand firm? Government is sorting out this situation. Don't allow people to capitalize who failed to resolve the crisis of gassing, who failed to resolve the crisis of political violence, who failed to resolve the crisis of the COVID-19. They failed to resolve political party violence. Today, they landed us into this mess and they want to convince you that this government has failed with only seven months, seven months in power. These are the same people that landed us into this economic pitfall that we have. We must remember the day that we voted. We must remember that day when we voted against a brutal regime that was only empowering their own political party cadres. We must remember the good things that President Agande Chile has done. One of the good things that President Agande Chile has done is that the retirees, as we are speaking right now, they are going to be withdrawing advance payment for their retirement package. It simply means that you don't have to die, okay, for you to, to for, your, for your family to get the, the money for a retirement package. What this means is that while you are still energetic, you can still withdraw an advance payment from your, from, your, from your retirement package and begin to invest. Salaries have been increased for civil servants. Hospitals have been commissioned. The Lusaka Hospital has been commissioned. Health workers have been employed. Teachers are going to be employed. There is a clean-up at the Lusaka City Council. There is a clean-up at the uh, uh, Ministry of Health. There is going to be a clean-up. There is a fight against corruption where new commissioners, chairpersons have been, have, been, have been appointed. We are likely and we are going to see great things that are going to come. We are not speaking because we are praise team members of UPND, but we are speaking the reality. 2.8 million Zambians that went to vote must not regret why they voted for President Agande Chirem because of failed politicians. The vision of President Agande Chirem and the manifesto yes. is still intact. Yes. We are talking about a president that feels for the sufferings of the Zambian yes. people. That's what we are saying. Okay, maybe just the last question before we go. Uh, of course, you are speaking from the party side and not that of government. Um, we are aware that, uh, I mean, we are talking about the fact that um, this uh, the increase in the pump price is due to uh, the war in Russia. However, we are aware that uh, the gradual increase of the fuel pump price began even before the war in Russia. Uh, how do you respond to that? It's very simple. The answer is very simple. You saw the president mentioning that in the procurement of fuel there were middlemen and subsidies were subsidies removed. Were removed. Yes. There was also mismanagement yes. at ERB. As we are speaking right now, I can confirm to the nation that uh, the energy regulation board that was there in the PF was dissolved. Yes. We have got a new energy regulation board that has been, uh, 
that has been uh, uh, ushered in. And our hope and trust is that this energy regulation board that is there is going to do the right thing because the, it's a new leadership that is going to manage the procurement of fuel and we see how we can move. One thing that we cannot learn away from is the fact that these people who were in government were criminals. These people who were in government were stealing. These people who were in government were mismanaging public funds, funds and the resources. Yes, yes. One thing that we cannot learn away from is to mention that the former government was so much corrupt that they were not interested in service delivery. There are a lot of ghost workers that were found yes. in the different ministries. Different there are a lot of misappropriation of funds that were recorded through the Auditor General's report and the Parliamentary Accounts Committee. You, Movie TV, and other media houses, you covered the Parliamentary Account Committee uh, uh, meetings where money was misappropriated through the Minister of Energy. Money was misappropriated through the procurement of fuel. Money was misappropriated. It went through certain ministers that procured assets. Some of these assets today have been forfeited to the states as proceeds of crime. Certain people are being investigated right now. That shows the depth of corruption that these people had. We are saying the new Don government is far much willing to deliver to the promises that they gave the Zambian people. Give us time, give us chance. The president of this country has not even finished appointing all the, 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 the office bearers. You saw that a few days ago he was even changing and restructuring the anti-corruption commission. Under the president leadership, we are going to see the fight against corruption. Uh, being taken to another level. Prudence in the management of public resources. That is the reason why we are appealing Mwebe Karachalo. Let us hold our hands. This country was left, this on, a was le left on a deathbed. This country was left on a deathbed. These people, they plundered the public resources. Now they should be the, they should be the, the last people. To echo the voices. They, shouldn't be the, they shouldn't even speak because we are where we are in the economic pitfalls because of them. Cadres were given an accounted money. They were flashing this money on social media without working. They gave CDF to, 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 to musicians, PF cadres that failed to bring back this money. Higher buses were given to cadres that failed to bring back this money. As we are speaking to you right now, even if they are, they are going to talk about uh, medicine in clinics, in hospitals, that is not there. That is a propaganda. The propaganda which is there is that there is no uh, medicine in, 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 in hospitals. Medicine, okay, in as much as there might be one or two issues in that ministry, we are saying that this is an economic sabotage, where the people who were appointed by Dr. Chirufia as health, uh, health workers, as directors in the Ministry of Health, they are sabotaging this, uh, this ministry. Very soon, there will be some restructuring. To prove that I'm not speaking from without, a few days ago, there were directors that were fired at Ministry of Health. These were directors that were conniving, that were conniving with some other procurement officers, getting drugs from government hospitals and taking these drugs to private pharmaceuticals. That is the reason why these directors were fired. These directors were fired because they were getting drugs that have got government seals, taking them to private pharmaceuticals. We are going to fight this corruption to the depth. A lot of people are going to be fired. That's why we are saying we need you, the Zambian people, to support us in this fight against the corruption. Support the president. The president is only seven, ma seven months. He cannot be distracted. Let us allow him to focus. To build a nation, we can't build a nation in seven months. We are not like the PF that said they were going to build Zambia in, in 90 days. We never promised the Zambian people that we were going to, to build Zambia in, in 90 days. We never promised the Zambia. We said we were going to deliver within the five years mandate. Within that five years mandate, it is not even one year. We are still building this country. Let us support this president. That is what we can say. Okay. Thank you very much. Unless there's anything else? No, I think uh, basically we just want to appeal to the citizens of the country 
to remain calm and give chance to the president of the country and the government so that uh, we see the good results. I think uh, let us stay calm and uh, let us wait. Yes, everything will be okay. This country was left on an economic deathbed. This country was on oxygen. And these guys, they cannot be out there trying to claim that all oh, this and this. No. They left this country on an economic deathbed. They should not be out there opening up their mouths at this and this and this. They, the Zambian people, you should not even tolerate them. They are not worth listening to. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for the interview.